All right, so I'm going to talk about Django. Um, start with uh, about me. I always like to put in there. My name's Doug. Don't worry about saying my last name. I don't really know how to say it either. Uh, I'm a software developer at Rackspace. I work on OpenStack. Uh, I work on actually security products for OpenStack. I'm a big security guy. Um, Top key, just the name of the stuff we do. Everything we do is open source. If anybody's interested, uh, my GitHub's there too, and you can tweet at me if you have any questions. This looks a little small to me. There we go, that's better. All right. So we're talking about Django. It's, uh, I'm going to try to make this quick. I, I usually do this presentation like about an hour slot, and so I want to try to rush through this. Um, web framework, they, the first person did a great job of explaining what a framework is. Uh, you've probably heard MVC been thrown a lot, a lot. If you don't know the MVC pattern, learning it is, is pretty much how, how websites are done now. Django's not an MVC. Well, it is an MVC framework, but uh, I like to tell everybody it's really an MTV framework, right? Uh, what normally you would consider a view, Django calls a template. Uh, normally you would call a controller, Django calls that a view. Models are always models. And so if you're not familiar with this, the, the idea with, with MVC frameworks is, uh, you know, your models describe your data and, and sort of like your domain logic and how your objects interact with each other. And templates, uh, usually it's, it's really just concerned about rendering web pages, right? Like your template, your view really, I won't try to get these here, I'll, I'll use Django terms. Your template really gen renders the, the HTML, you know, fill in the blanks, all that good stuff. Um, and then your view in Django world is what normally you would consider a controller, and that takes care of you know tying your model and, and your views together. So, um, why Django? One of the cool things that I like about Django is that it has it's really very flexible about the URL. Like, whatever URL scheme you want to design, you can do that in Django. And um, I'll get into that in, in a little bit more. If you haven't read this, there I have a URL on here. It's called uh, Cool URIs Don't Change. Uh, read that sometime. It's really interesting. Uh, I know a lot of convention over configuration things like kind of mandate what URL looks like. Uh, not a fan of that. Um, Django's also got a built-in ORM. You don't have to worry about writing SQL for the most part. Although I do recommend you know what's going on under the hood or else you're going to run into problems. Uh, Django also includes everything in the kitchen sink, right? So this is going to be one of those uh, heavyweight frameworks that pretty much anything you'd want to do, somebody's already done, you can, you can add that to your project. Um, Django's got a development web server you can get up and running without having to like, you know, set up Apache and waste a couple of days trying to figure that out and getting your, you know, plugins right or whatever. You can start coding and serving your web page right away. Um, bunch of bunch of really cool built-in stuff. But because of that, Django is big, right? There's a lot of stuff you're going to learn if you're going to learn all of Django. But it, hopefully, this, I'll give you a, a nice little preview overview of like sort of the main points. Um, documentation is great. I know they said the Falcon guy said their documentation is really great. I challenge him to say, you know, Django documentation is better. But uh, I don't know. I'm just making that up. Uh, tutorials, there's the tutorial at the official docs. If you if follow that by my mind, you'll learn a whole lot of this stuff. Um, so request handling, the way Django works is, you know, your request comes into a web server. I talked about the development web server. It's really just for development. Don't put that out on the internet. It'll get knocked over really silly. Um, but so, you know, your request will come into through a regular web server. You can use Apache, you can use Nginx or whatever else you like to host with, as long as it speaks Python. Um, Django parses the URL out of the request, right? This is the way I like to think about Django is everything comes in through the URL, parses the URL with whatever rules you gave it, and then hands it off to a view, the view then you know, gets all the information together that you need. Hence that. See your template, the template will render it out. Um, there's also this thing called middleware. And these, you can think of these as like filters for the request, right? Request comes in, goes through the middleware, to your views, back out the middleware, back to the response, back to the client. Sort of a picture of, of how this works, right? We start with a request coming in from the browser to the server, goes into the Django framework this is where middleware processing happens. Django hands that out to your view, depending on the URL. Um, view then, you know, maybe you'll fetch some stuff out from your database, and then it'll take that stuff from the database and hand that to your template, and your template will render a real pretty HTML web page, and you hand that out back to the browser. 
middleware, like I mentioned, you can think of this as like a stack of filters. And so as the request is coming in, uh, it's going to be processed by a bunch of middleware classes, right? You can think of this as like stuff you want to do for every single request that comes in through your web server. Goes through your views, your views will do whatever it is that your views do. And then it'll go back through the middleware in the opposite order in which it came in. It's uh, a little tricky. Some good to know, I think. Uh, so how do I get Django? You install it, pip install Django. If you have pip install, then uh, that's all you need. And so what you'll get with Django is very similar to Rails. I think I think a lot of I think Rails was first, right? So a lot of the Django ideas were kind of stolen from Rails. And so what you'll get is this like command line tool that will let you do things. Uh, basically, write out skeletons for you to then, you know, add your logic into. And so, the way you begin a, a Django project is that, um, you know, you'll use this this Django admin py command. It's an executable script that gets added to your to your Python path. Uh, basically, say start project. I'm going to be showing basically a bookstore example for all of his slides. But if you look at what happens when you run this, you'll create a folder called bookstore. Inside that is another folder called Bookstore. It might be a little confusing, but it's actually a Python package that's going to sort of control what your project looks like. All your settings are going to be in here. A lot of it is convention. You can tweak stuff. You don't have to stick to the Django way if you don't want to. Uh, URLs will define what the URLs look like. Uh, WSGI is the entry point for your web server. And then there's this nifty manage PY script, which is really what you use after you've created your project skeleton. Uh, so the way that Django likes to think about websites, right, it, it, it's just got a project at the top level. This is what you get when you create a project. And then sort of in this project, you, you add applications. They call it apps or whatever. Um, and these are like little self-contained pieces of website, right? So like think about maybe a comment section on your, or, or a blog section to your website. Um, something that's reusable, right? And that's the cool thing about, um, Django applications, so you could you could write them once and then share them across with different websites and stuff like that. And let's see here. So this is some actual actual Python code. Awesome. Uh, URL conf. This is the URL py compile I showed you guys. This is sort of where the flexibility on what your URLs look like begins, right? The way that you match URLs in Django is using regular expressions. Now I know a lot of people get scared about regular expressions. Uh, as long as you keep them simple, it should be pretty good. Uh, you use parentheses to capture anything from the URI. And sort of the way this works is you, you define what the pattern is going to be sort of after your host name, right? Like anything, any slash anything after that is what you're writing the regular expression to catch. Anything in the URL can be captured. And the things that you capture are going to then be passed into your view as a string of that that you can then do something with, hopefully something interesting. And so like we have my example here, you know, let's say I'm, I'm writing this for bookstore.com, then I want my URLs to look like slash book and then slash the ISBN number, right? And so what I'm going to do is just write a, a quick little regular expression to capture that book slash, or sorry, match that book slash and then capture that that integer number out of there. That's going to be passed in as a string later on to the view. We'll show you what a view looks like in a minute. Uh, you can also do a partial match on this. And so what this does is uh, when you have your website organized into you know, apps, this way you can sort of defer this URL matching to the app. And so any URL that comes in that starts with slash admin, it's just going to be passed down to the admin app. And then the admin app will take care of figuring out what it is that you're trying to get. Um, admin app is included as part of Django. It's actually already enabled by default whenever you create a new project. Um, the model layer is uh, basically you're going to be writing popos, not the police kind, but plain old Python objects. Um, the usual pattern you'll see around all of Django is that you import some kind of module and then you inherit from a class in that module, and then that's going to do some interesting things, right? And so for my, for my bookstore here, I want to have an author in a book. And then the author is going to have a first name and a last name. These are just you know, class properties that it's going to have. And because I'm inheriting from model, what Django is going to provide is it's going to allow me to write this stuff instead of writing SQL, right? It's going to generate all the SQL for me out of this. Um, 
And so stuff like character fields, I can find that. It's going to turn into a bar chart in your database. Um, stuff like relationships, you can do like a foreign key here. And so this is going to turn it into a foreign key in your SQL database. Um, basically, this is a one-to-many relationship, right? One author can write many books, um, but books can only have one author. You can do all kinds of, any kind of SQL relationship you want to do. You can do sort of with this ORM um, language. And so the cool thing about this is that um, I've mentioned that manage py script that's at the base of your project. You can do something like manage py sync db, and Django will look at this file and see that you have uh, two object classes there, and then turn that, like, generate all the SQL to create those tables in your database. Now, um, caveat on this is that it doesn't update uh, changes to an existing table. You have to write that yourself. There's, there's a library called um, South that will let you do that. Actually, uh, it's, it's going to be part of Django in the next release. Um, Django ORM, so once you've got that, the way you do uh, like SQL queries and stuff like that, it's using a, a Django ORM like mini query language, they call it. And so you can do stuff like, um, so if you want to create, like say create a new object, right, like add a new record to your table, you would just instantiate that class that represents the object and then just do a dot save on that object you instantiated. And this will actually go in and, and write that to your database. Um, there's also an objects property on the class. Now that's important because this is a class, not, not an instance of the class. But you can do stuff like uh, this object attribute has a bunch of methods on it. And so stuff like create, this will do basically what we did right here, of instantiating something and saving it to the database in one pass, and then returns the Python representation of that object. Um, the way you do queries is with methods on this object's attribute. And so you can do like a dot all. This is like select star from table. And it'll just return a Python list of the Python objects that are stored in that table. Um, get, this is you know, like a select from where x equals whatever. So what this is doing is it says writing an object whose primary key is equal to that one value. Also, if you want to do select from where, you do that with filter. One of the interesting things here, what I wanted to point out about the, the, the query language is that everything's done with this double underscore thing on the method you pass in. Um, Django then will split this up on the double underscores and then do your match, right? So this will, this will filter all the books whose title contains Django. Um, this double underscore can also be used to, to dereference objects. And so last name here is a property on the author of object, which is itself a property on the books, right? And so here we're gonna filter an author, but only if the author's last name starts with P, and this is a case insensitive stuff, right? And so the last piece of, of basically the query that you're passing in will, will get interpreted by, by Django a certain way. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you get used to it, it, it comes real naturally. It's really easy to do um, queries this way. Um, there's, you can control sort of the SQL that gets generated after this when you get into like performance issues and stuff like that. Uh, I did mention I'm a security guy, so I want to point out that um, SQL injection is uh, SQL injection protection is enabled by default. So if you're doing the kind of queries that I was talking about here, you don't have to worry about it. There is a way to, to execute raw SQL on your database. And so one caveat I wanted to, to point out is a real subtle difference. is that string formatting this way is really dangerous. Like this is the SQL in, in injection vulnerability right there. The way you're supposed to do it is to pass the value as an argument, as a second argument into this raw function, and then the raw function will take care of escaping that and making sure your database doesn't get blown away. View functions, this is normally what you would think of as a controller. And uh, I think this is probably my favorite part about Django. Um, it's really just a, just a Python function parameter that comes in as the request. Now this is gonna be the request that came through the web server parse by Django, turn it into a Python object, and it's right there for you to use in your class, or in your, in your method. All that Django expects is that the return type of your function is an HTTP response or a subclass of HTTP response. 
you can also raise an exception here, and there's like in that middleware I talked about, uh, middleware that catches exceptions and then generates responses based on that. And so you can look at something like this here. This is another view function. This is one that actually takes an additional argument. And so if we match these back to the URLs I was talking about, this is a view that matches that URL that was capturing the integer from the ISBN from the book, right? And it's passing that in as this ISBN of, or sorry, getting to my method. Uh, and so what I'm doing here is just basically doing a query with that ISBN number that came in. Remember, I don't have to worry about SQL injection or anything like that. Uh, this may throw an exception, so I just catch it here. If it does, I just re-race it at HTTP 404. Middleware will see this exception and render out a 404 page and send that back. Um, also, I was showing here that I'm not really returning a response right away. What I'm returning here is whatever this function is going to do, right? So what this function is, is, is how you tie into the templating part of it, right? Of generating the HTML. And so basically, this is going to take a template, and it's going to pass this dictionary full of values for the template to use. And then once the template is done being rendered, then it's going to be passed back to Django and back out to the client. And so templates, if you look here, it's um, the templating system. It's a little weird. It's, it's actually it started in Django, then it's split off as its own, as its own library. But basically, you're going to be doing these uh, either squiggly percent or double squiggly brackets here. And the difference is this is going to execute. And this is like a, like a type of language that's uh, very similar to Python, but not quite Python. Uh, this block tag here is going to start a block. And this is for template inheritance. Uh, and you can do stuff like the, the double curlies will print the value out. So if you remember from the previous slide, I passed in a dictionary for values. This is looking up in that dictionary. It's looking at book, and it's going to grab that book title and then print that out. Um, you can also do conditional rules and loops and stuff like that. If you want to fill up a table, you can do a, you can do a four or whatever. Uh, this is not limited to HTML, right? The only reason this is HTML is because the static HTML is here. If you're writing an application that talks JSON, you can do this with JSON. And uh, this is an example of like inheriting from a template, right? You can you can say that this template here inherits from the base one, and then you don't have to rewrite anything except for the stuff you want to overwrite, which in this case is this title block, which will give me a new title, content block, which will give me a good a content. And so the cool thing about this is you could write like the layout of your website in just a single template, and then the different pieces of your website will just override maybe the content pane or the sidebar pane or whatever it is that, that you guys are doing. Um, when you're, whenever you're printing out stuff to HTML, you should be worried about cross-site scripting. Uh, in Django, cross-site scripting is mitigated by default. Uh, you can get around that by piping this into safe. Basically, this takes you know, whatever object you're printing out and, and prints it out literally. Be careful with that. Um, Django's got a bunch of other stuff. One of the cool things I thought that I wanted to talk about was forms. The forms sort of follows that same pattern that models you, where you uh, inherit from the form class, and every attribute in that class is going to be some, some other kind of class here. This is a character field, an email field. And so what's cool about forms is that like, Django takes care of rendering all this stuff out for you, right? So if you're, if you're trying to store a date, then Django knows that you probably want a date picker to go along with that. And so it will render all that stuff for you. Um, the way you use that is, you know, in a view, you would then check what kind of method that view has, and then maybe do some stuff. Um, you can do, you can add validation rules to your form, and so you can do that kind of stuff. Um, one of the weird things is like the Django URL matcher only matches on the URL, not the method of the request, and so you have to do that in your own view. Um, this view here does both checks for posts or checks for gets, and, and does the the right thing, right? on manage CDB. And this is going to take that model class and create all my tables. Yes, I want a super user. I'll add in. And the super secure password of admin to go with that. And so what I'm going to do now is just start 
the development servers. So I'm going to say Python manage, and I think it's uh, server. Uh, I forgot my command I wanted. Um, uh, start server. There's my hello world. It's probably a little hard to read up top here, but basically I'm just going to do a slash book, slash one, and there's nothing there because I haven't added anything to my database yet. Um, this is four four. Anyway, these are all the development pages. Uh, whenever you have like a 500 error, this is populated with all kinds of context, like what was in memory, what method was executing. You can drill down to like every property of every class that was in memory at the time the 500 happened. Super easy to debug stuff with this. I also want to show you guys the admin site. And uh, this is enabled by, by default. I'm using this admin, admin user that I've had here. And so you see like groups and users are already included in there. And so the admin site is, you know, usually you, you create like more often than not like some kind of crud web page. And so what I wanted to show you guys is how easy it is to add stuff to this admin site. Uh, so all I'm doing here is adding a new import. I'm importing book, which is one of the classes I wrote in, or the class I wrote in my models. I'm going to create a new class here. Um, this is my models here. I want to do that. Um, all right, made my inventory at API. This is where I want to put this. Thing. Okay. So basically, I'm just adding a new class that's going to adding a new class that matches my book class from earlier, right? This is the book admin I inherited from model admin. Like I said, that usual pattern in Django is that you, you inherit from some other Django class, and that, that provides a lot of stuff for you. Uh, and then all I'm doing here is registering. I'm saying that that book I created in my models is the, how am I doing on time? Two minutes? I'm almost there. Okay. Um, just basically tying up these two, right? This book admin with, with the book I had earlier. Uh, so I'm going to write this out. Stop the server. Sync DB again. Run server again. And once I reload, you'll see here that I have my books now as part of the inventory, right? So I only wrote like four lines in Python, but what I get is this whole section now that doesn't list any books, but I can add a book, and it knows that I want to add a title to it, and maybe, you know, it's written by some guy. And because I declared that one attribute in there that was going to be a uh, date time, it knows that I probably want a date here. Today, I can get a calendar picker to go with that, right? And so this is what I think is really cool about Django is that by running just very little code, it's able to like infer all the stuff that you probably want. Now you can customize this stuff to, to make it look however you want. It's, it's really easy, you know, you just override that template, you know, maybe change the CSS files and then you can make this look beautiful. And so like think about how much time you save having to create like the administrator's CRUD pages for whatever website it is that you're trying to write. And so I could save this here that went straight to my database. This is not very helpful though because if I create you know, a, a few of these, then uh, they all say book object, right? That's no good. So I'm going to go to my, to my bookstore again, inventory, to my models class. You see, all I'm going to do here 
is declare our new string. Just a string representation of this, and I want to return. Right, and as soon as I add the string representation to my class, then Django knows that that's what the book represents, right? So you can do stuff there to like change how your objects are listed here. You can also do stuff like add columns and whatnot. Um, so anyway, I highly recommend Django. It was really the reason I, start, I got into Python. And um, I came from like a background of doing like ASP MVC and ASP.NET and uh, Spring MVC. And so like, to me, the speed at which I could produce stuff in Django compared to those other like frame, frameworks was just like amazing, like two or three times as fast, right? Um, and also, there's uh, there's a pretty big community for Django now. Like a lot of stuff that you need are is probably taken care of. Um, it's pretty cool. All right. Uh, so questions? Yes. So Python three friendly. Yes, actually, this whole demo I was running in Python three. Awesome. <laughs> yes, yes. The admin interface, like how does it handle one to many or many to many? It'll, so like uh, on one to many, like if I had actually written that author thing, it'll have a drop down with everything that's in your database. Um, yes. Um, <clears throat> it said that page when you had the inventory, that was like your models, right? Yeah. It said write your models here? Yeah. Is that actually all your models? Yeah, you can put, well, so all the models that belong in that app, right? Like every app has its own models py file that goes with it. And when you sync the B, it'll look into, into every single app that is installed and, and sort of gather all of, all those models and then put them in your database. Does that, does that answer your question? Yeah, it, sounds, it sounds really big. Like it sounds like it gets really big, like a fat model, plus another fat model. You have like a giant model. I mean, I, I think I'm probably missing something. Like Look, so you would have like a giant model file, right? You're worried about having like a 2,000 line yeah. kind of yeah. thing. So that's normal in Python. Right? There's not, this is not Java where your class has to have its own file and you end up with 50 files for you know your different classes. You know, if you, you can split these up, right? It, it's just Python. If you think if you feel like your models files get too big, then you can you know split that off into whatever modules you think are make sense and then just import them all together. Any more questions, guys? Back to the back. Have you ever used GeoJango before? Yes, actually, one project I did was with GeoJango. We we're using PostGIS for the back end. Um, there is, uh, it, it, so adding GeoDjango adds a lot of uh, stuff to the query language. And so you can do stuff like search by radius and stuff like that. Does that, does that answer your question? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Alrighty, guys, anybody else? More questions from here? Yes. Where's the, where's the best uh, handful of resources? Or oh, to, so. To, to, to just take a, take a dive into it. Oh. Right, like uh, I think I mentioned earlier that Django documentation is awesome. If you go to the docs, just click up here, uh, upper right corner over here, documentation, right? It's djangoproject.com. If you go here, you start with the tutorial you see right here, tutorial part one. Just walk through that. It's, it's step by step, hold your hand, it gives you the full tour of, of pretty much all the major stuff you can use. Yes. You also mentioned that uh, uh, open source project, uh, Cloud Secure, was that it? Cloud Key. Cloud Key? Yes. Yes. That's the stuff I do for work. And uh, I can tell you all about that offline if, you, if you're interested. <laughs> cool. Anybody else? All right. Big round of applause. That's awesome. That's awesome.